What the f Hello everyone, in this video I'll talk about the progress since the last devlog on my Greek mythology based multiplayer fighting game, and especially about my Elden Ring slash Dark Souls inspired fairy system. So one of the things I was pretty unhappy with was how lock-on slash launches worked, so I kinda tried to make it like in Battlefront 2, where an attack can kind of lock you on or get you closer to your opponent from a certain range. And I kinda got this working a while ago already, but it was never really in sync with the animation and it just looked kinda weird. So I once again started experimenting a bit, and then, well, shit like this happened. In the end I split the attack animation up into different states, and only made the locking work in the main swing phase, which is now also the only phase where hit detection is doing its thing. Since it doesn't really make sense that you can already hit other players at the start of the attack animation when you're just getting your weapon into position. And as you probably can see, launches look a lot more natural now, since they happen in sync with the animation. And I generally made the animation state machine look a lot less messy by splitting this shit up into different sub-state machines. Okay, let's talk about parry. So in my previous devlog I had a parry system where you could trigger parry from holding block, and the parry animation would only play if you timed it right, and if you did you could also follow up with a quick repost. However, even though this parry system was already a pretty huge improvement compared to what I had before that, it still felt kinda awkward and felt kinda cheesy considering you could parry from block. So I once again tried to look a bit on how other games do parry, and I kinda like the way how Elden Ring or Dark Souls do it. Now, to be fair, I've never really tried to play Elden Ring or Dark Souls, but I thought I'll try to do a similar approach to how they do it. And I had previously already thought about only making parry work from a non-blocking state to kinda balance it. I just thought it wouldn't really look good with my animations, but I think that was just a lazy excuse on my end since I think it ended up looking pretty okay. So I made new parry and repost animations, and made it so that you have to trigger parry from a non-blocking state, and the parry animation now also plays regardless of your timing, or if someone is attacking you. However, it only protects you from damage, and allows you to repost if you timed it right. And if you time it right, your opponent will be put into a stagger animation, which should give you enough time to repost or maybe use an ability. I also made this satisfying sound effect, which together with the stagger of the opponent, confirms a successful parry. And it generally makes parrying a lot more satisfying in my opinion. So first I made it so that you had like 0.3 seconds to react, and the time window would start when the opponent's attack animation started. However, this led to that you basically had to predict when your opponent would attack next, and in the end when doing playtesting, both players would just parry all the time and try to predict the opponent's next attack. This of course wasn't my intention, that both players would just try to parry and no one would attack, so I instead made it so that, that you have to parry right before the opponent and would hit you, and to not make it too easy, I reduced the time window to like 0.1 seconds, but I'll probably play around a bit with the time window in the future. And I also made it so that the parry logic would take the client's ping into account, so the parry time window should always be pretty much the same for everyone, besides variations in character stats of course. Definitely let me know what you guys think, I'm personally pretty happy with the parry system for now. Later I also made a parry and repost animation for Hecate, and I also started working on some more complex attack animations for her. And of course her current weapons are just placeholders, in the right hand she will have a dagger and in the left hand a torch. And Connor already made a nice model for the dagger, but it still needs to be textured. At some point I noticed that my client side prediction logic was causing some delays, especially with attacks and parries, so what happened was that the input buffer on the server was somehow growing, and at some point it grew so big that the parry time window was completely different, and in the worst case scenario, it got so bad that uh, every player just got yeeted around. I luckily managed to fix that pretty quickly, but I've often been thinking about just scrapping client-side prediction and going for a client authoritative movement. Since client-side prediction is making everything significantly more complicated and just causing a lot of bullshit along the way. Especially with this project where like everything is affecting the movement somehow. But then again I've spent so much f***ing time getting client-side prediction working and understanding the whole concept, so I probably can't go that step and just scrap it now. And to be fair, the problem isn't even the movement at this point, but rather the animations, which also control the hit detection in a way. I also made it so that you can now dodge abilities, which uh, totally worked first try. Bruh. But... At least now it's working. And another thing I started working on is some sort of launch attack that will play when you land from a jump. 
So the plan is, if you press attack when your character is still moving upwards during a jump, it will play a normal jump attack, kind of like in Battlefront 2. But if you press attack before landing, it will do this jump land launch strike thing. But I'll probably also rework the current normal jump attack animation, since it, there's kind of room for improvement there. And I generally want to improve some of the current animations and add more animation variations, and also improve the transitions. Because currently, things tend to look a bit weird at times. And with that being said, don't forget to wishlist Olympian Knights on Steam, link will be in the video description, because wishlists can apparently really help the game in the Steam algorithm later on. So I greatly appreciate each wishlist. Okay, I think that was pretty much everything. I hope you all enjoyed watching. Feel free to leave me some feedback in the comments about the devlog or end the game. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!